All right, guys, we are back talking about the playoff games from uh, Saturday night. Uh, but before we talk about those playoff games, I'd like to remind you guys that uh, the link that you see on the screen right now, gsmcpodcast.net, if you guys have any questions, comments uh, for me that you want me to you know, uh, react to, uh, talk about, uh, discuss with you guys, go ahead and use that link for the tips and donations. Or you could put it in the chat as well. I might be able to see it for you guys. Um, once again, the link for you is gsmcpodcast.net. Uh, but without further ado, we're going to talk about the playoff games from Saturday night. <clears throat> you have uh, two great games here, uh, the Carolina Hurricanes and the Dallas Stars. The Carolina Hurricanes were able to warn off the Dallas Stars. <laughs> Carolina Hurricanes were able to warn off the New York Rangers. Sorry, I was looking at the Stars. Um, were able to warn off the New York Rangers um, to take or to uh, bring that game back to uh, New York for a game five. That game is currently being played right now. Um, and out of curiosity for you guys, because we do this live, um, the Carolina Hurricanes won four to one. So they make that series three to two. And that's going to be very interesting. Uh, we'll talk about that game. I'm, I have a little preview for that game, but I'm going to probably react more um, to that score line when we get into our fifth segment. But yeah, uh, the Carolina Hurricanes, uh, 3-1 now in this series after this game, 3-2 after the other game. Uh, now you're going back to New York. Um, now you're going back to Carolina, I guess, uh, for game six. But just a game recap, you have Kuznetsov. Uh, he's the guy that got the uh, Carolina Hurricanes on the board early, jumping out to a one nothing lead with a high shot that beats Igor Shosturkin. Uh, Kuznetsov, I believe, was on a little bit of an odd man rush uh, coming down the wing, and he just uh, fires it right over the shoulder of Igor Shosturkin for that first goal. It was kind of a weird goal for Igor to let up. You don't really see him giving those, um, you know, those easy goals. I People don't snipe on him very easily. It usually takes a deflection goal. It usually takes a uh, move that just would beat any goalie. It usually takes something like that that beats Igor Shosturkin. But I, Kuznetsov just snipes it right over him. And it was a great goal from Ev- Evgeny Kuznetsov. Uh, and it was great for the Hurricanes to be able to see that puck kind of beat Igor. Uh, that's been their struggle throughout this entire uh, series, you know, Igor Shosturkin has been just a brick wall in net. He's been the absolute best goaltender in these playoffs. Now he's at a 2.25 goals against average. Um, him and really Jake Andre are fighting for the goals against average lead for goalies left in the playoffs. You do have guys at the top that didn't play in as many games. Uh, Joe Wall, Adam Hill, Thatcher Demko, who got injured. You see Soros, who is no longer in the playoffs. And Casey DeSmith, who isn't even starting for the Canucks. Um so those are the guys ahead of Oninger and Shosturkin. And then you have Jeremy Swayman right behind them, Sergey Bobrovsky right behind them. It's been very good goaltending in these playoffs so far. And uh, Igor Shosturkin has kind of been the uh, headline of that great goaltending. He's been very hard to beat. And the Carolina Hurricanes kind of had his number this game. <clears throat> the second goal from the Hurricanes was Stefan Nesson. Uh, he doubles the Canes lead after a cross-crease uh, feed met his stick from Tebo Teravainen. It's great positioning from uh, Stefan Essen. And then, you know, you have a couple of Rangers defensemen who are a little bit out of position. I want to say out of position. This was a lengthy offensive zone time for the Carolina Hurricanes. And then when you get lengthy offensive zone time, you kind of get your defensemen um, being very reactive instead of proactive, I would I would say. And that was kind of their problem. You know, Jacob Trubin and uh, Ryan Lindgren were the two defensemen on the ice for that one. And I don't know if it's really their fault for this goal, but uh, if they're in position like they should be, it it would have been stopped. Um, but it's not really – you can't really blame that one on them directly. Eager also let up – it's a cross crease, so it's not soft, but, I mean, it's Eager Shosturkin. So we've gotten to a point with this guy that you kind of expect him to make that save, which is – Unfair, but I mean realistic for him. And then the Rangers were able to cut the lead in half uh, by their fourth line. That he uh, Will Kyle gets a goal. Uh, you know it was a pass from Capacaco that met him his stick. Capacaco with very great vision on this goal to be able to find Will Kyle. Uh, Will Kyle, 
there it is. <laughs> um, you know, that's another Ranger who needs to get going, though, Capacaco. This is a former top three pick in the NHL draft, kind of like Alexis Lafreniere. You saw Alexis Lafreniere step up. He's been gaining even more minutes because he has been gaining that great offensive production. Uh, we'll see if Capacaco can kind of follow in his footsteps. But when it came to, you know, this game, and when it comes to a lot of the Rangers game, and this is kind of what carried them through the regular season, was um, all four forward lines were great. Uh, and it wasn't really, you know, one or the other overpowering. And, and on this goal specifically, there's really nothing Freddie could do. He just, uh, Will Kyle just played, I mean, all perfect on this possession. And, and Cavacaco had a great feed on this possession, too. Uh, and then a little bit after that, you have Sebastian Ajo. Uh, you know, this guy has been carrying the Carolina Hurricanes offensively, and he's continuing to do so. Uh, he's one of the greatest players in this ga- in the game, Sebastian Ajo, and he's really proven it in these postseason. And I can't really talk enough good about uh, this kid. Uh, he, he has got his 10th point in the last nine games. This is the same point tally as Valerie Nishushkin had before his um, suspension. <laughs> Uh, but that goal capped off a four goal first period uh, for the Carolina Hurricanes to go up four to or sorry three to one, and after that it, this game was really just dead I would say. Um, the Rangers did very good to fight back and they did make a comeback, but it, it felt the entire way like the Carolina Hurricanes kind of played better hockey. Um, I, you know the the Rangers did were able to tie up this game back. But I didn't. I never felt like there was a point where I felt like the Hurricanes weren't going to win this game. They needed to win this game. They played like they needed to win this game, and they did win this game, um, which led to a game uh, five in New York that they were also were able to win. So it's a little bit interesting in the series. Uh, I, before I get into that, you had goals from Goodrow uh, for the Rangers. You had Lafreniere scoring his fourth of this playoffs. Man, he's been great in this series. We talked about him needing to get going, and he absolutely has. Um, unfortunately, the first line for the Rangers kind of let them down in this uh, game, which is usually not the case, and so it's surprising to see. But you have, you know, Alexis Lafreniere scoring, uh, Brian Goodrow scoring, um, and then White. Uh, late in the third period with three minutes left for the Carolina Hurricanes they get a power play and they were able to score on it it's Brady Shea that scores on it he gets his first goal of the postseason um, he's been cold and cold against the Rangers uh, not really having any offensive production so it's really good for the Carolina Hurricanes to see him going and now I'm a little bit curious bear with me here I'm curious to see if he scored in this game um, it's Jordan Stahl Brady Shea he did get an assist in this game um and and I, this is what I was going to talk about is when you really see goals, uh, when you see the puck go in the net, uh, you kind of feel better offensively and you get more production. Even like when it comes to just assists, you just get more production and you play a lot better when it comes onto the offensive side. And you're really going to need production from Brady Shea. This is this uh, game five and this game four. You see no points still from Seth Jarvis in this game or in this game, in this series, that's still concerning. You're going to want to see that guy step up. He led the team in scoring in the first round, so to not see him step up is a little bit worrisome. Um, you know, this series is going to be a good one, and this game five really proved it. I'll give you my thoughts on this series a little bit later. Uh, as we flip on over to the Stars' uh, Avs game, the Stars dominated the Colorado Avalanche in this game, winning 4-1, to one, going up 2-1 in this series. And with Valerie Nishushkin being out for the remainder of it, man, this could get a little bit scary as the puck did just drop uh, in Game 4 for the Dallas Stars versus the Colorado Avalanche. Um, So yeah, you're going up 2-1 in the series. The Stars had best point percentage uh, away from from home in the regular season, and they continue that on the road against the Colorado Avalanche. they have been, like I just said, they have been great on the road the entire uh, the entire postseason and the entire regular season, and it continues here. This is where they battle back against the Vegas Golden Knights. Uh, they, if you guys don't remember, they went down two nothing in that series, and then they were they were able to fight back. They won both games in Vegas, uh, and able to fight back in that series. In this series, they do a little bit better. They do take one in their home arena. Um, 
and now you're going and now you're going into Colorado. They take this game three and the game four uh, just got underway without Valerie Nashushkin. It could get a little bit scary for the Colorado Avalanche if they lose that game. I would say it's definitely a must win. Um, but for this game, let me tell you, Jake Andre completely stole this game. Uh, this was him and him alone. Maybe not him alone, but uh, you know, you do score four goals. However, he absolutely shut down the Avalanche. The Avalanche could have scored four or five times in the first period alone. Uh, but Jake Andre just completely shut the door on that. Uh, he played lights out in this game, and he's been playing lights out all playoffs. Like I just said, he is the uh, goals against average leader in these playoffs so far. Uh, so he's been playing amazing. Uh, the Avs had many scoring chances in the first period, like I said. Um, the puck beat Jake Gondger late in the first period, but uh, it was a defensive stick that saved it by mere inches from crossing the goal line. Uh, it just trickled past uh, Jake Gondger's five hole, and they were able to make sure it didn't go in the net. Uh, that was a great that was a great sign for the Dallas Stars. Uh, and after that, it really was all the Stars. You have Logan Stankoven with a snipe uh, on Mira, with a snipe, and Mira Heiskanen gets an assist. Mira Heiskanen has been amazing. He might be outplaying the uh, Colorado Avalanche in this series, or Colorado. He might be outplaying Kel McCarr in this series. He's looked really good. Mira Heiskanen, uh, one of the best defensemen in the NHL, and he's really proving that. Uh, offensive pressure got too much, and the Avs were just scrambling on this goal specifically. Um, and and that goal came in late in the first period, and it was kind of a shock goal because you know the Colorado Avalanche had been on the front for, foot the entire uh, period, and then for the Dallas Stars to get that one back really saw a lot of momentum shift, and it just seemed like the Dallas Stars were winning this game completely the entire way. Uh, the Abs tie it up with an amazing effort from Nathan McKinnon. It's a puck that trickles past Jake Onger and um, Miko Ranton and just slides it home. Uh, that was great to see if you're a Colorado Avalanche fan, but that was the only moment of brilliance you really saw from the Colorado Avalanche when it came offensively in this game. But it is great to see Nathan McKinnon kind of come with that offensive brilliance. It's playoff superstars need to be superstars. Um, the uh, the Stars with an amazing feed by uh, Evgeny Dadanov uh, regained the lead, goes up 2-1. This is uh, Tyler Sagan. This is his first of two goals that he scored. And Dadanov and uh, Sam Steele with the assist. And then the Stars um, won the second and third period, which led to their win in this in this game. It's been difficult for the Stars at points in this postseason to kind of string along multiple periods. Um, but they were able to do that in the second and third and defensively. And, you know, Jake Ondra-wise, it was unbelievable. You could say that Jake Ondra in that first period really gave them that push uh, when it came to the second and when it came to the third as they do get two uh, empty net goals at the end of the third period to make this game look a little bit more lopsided than it really was. Uh, that's why I say that Jake Ondra really stole this one because, honestly, this is a 2-1 to -one game, and Jake Ondra could have let up four goals in that first period alone. And if he, if he even lets up two of those goals, this is a completely different game. Um, so it's really great for the Colorado Avalanche uh, to, or sorry, it's really great for the Dallas Stars to go into Colorado and, you know, dominate like they did, have just a complete game uh, offensively and defensively. Um, so that'll do it for the Saturday night action. When I come back, we'll be talking about the games from Sunday night um, as you have the Panthers and the Bruins play a great game and then the Oilers and the Canucks. Um, that game goes into game four now. Um, so that'll do it. We'll take our short break now.